name is Manfred Helber. I'm a Microsoft Most Valuable Professional in the category Cloud and Data Center. In this video, we will talk about registering Azure Stack HCI with Microsoft Azure and configuring Azure Arc. We will not only speak about it, we will also configure it via the Windows Admin Center. So before we start with the configuration, let's talk a little bit about the Azure Stack HCI connectivity to Azure. As we have learned in previous modules, Azure Stack HCI is an operating system we install on our on-premises servers. So Azure Stack HCI runs on your physical servers on your physical on-premises. In my lab scenarios, I'm using virtual machines. This is also possible for demoing it and testing it. Azure Stack HCI is registered with Microsoft Azure because we already discussed in previous lab modules that Azure Stack HCI is Microsoft Azure. The registration in Azure is, for example, used for the billing concept we have in Azure Stack HCI because Azure Stack HCI does not produce any upfront costs because we have a pay-per-use model based on the physical cores on your physical hosts. If an Azure Stack HCI cluster is completely configured and registered in Azure, you can check the status in the settings in Windows Admin Center for a specific Azure Stack HCI cluster. And here you will see it's registered. And here you will also see Azure Arc integration status is enabled. So let's see in a live demo how the registration of Azure Stack HCI in Azure works. Before we register this cluster, we will see which steps are possible without in Azure integration and where we have the limitation, what's not possible without Azure integration. And because it's a new um, Windows Admin Center installation we use here, we will also see the required steps to onboard the Windows Admin Center to enable Windows Admin Center to configure Azure related services and features. So what we here see in the live demo, it's a Windows Admin Center. We installed this Windows Admin Center in a previous module and we deployed via this Windows Admin Center a cluster here in this demonstration, we select a two node cluster in the list of the clusters here. For the two node cluster, we can see this cluster has no alerts, everything is fine, all servers are healthy, all drives are healthy, but this cluster is actually not registered. You can see there's a link register this cluster, but before we register this cluster, we want to have a look at a few steps to see what's possible without a registration of the cluster. So it's, it's my recommendation to first register the cluster. But for me, it's important that you understand what's the limitation when a cluster is not connected to Azure, when an Azure Stack HCI cluster is not connected to Azure, because many customers are afraid what happens if my cluster is connected to Azure, is registered in Azure, and now I have a disconnection for a few minutes, for a few hours, for a few days. And what I want to show you that all the workload will remain up and running because here we can see we have our servers in the cluster. The servers, they are up and running. We have our drives, they are up and running. We have volumes and we can create new volumes. This is important. I can create new volumes even if the cluster is not registered. Details about how to create volumes is part of another lab module. Here I only want to show you that we can create this volume here. Let's take a small volume. The volume is created. The volume is provided and the volume is status OK. I can put data in the volume. I can access the volume. I can use the volume. 
So what we here see is typical behavior. It needs a few seconds till the volume is displayed. The volume is created with the, with the redundancy level I selected. And then we need to wait a few more seconds or to click on refresh, the volume is there. Everything works fine. Actually, I don't have any virtual machines, but if they are virtual machines, they are running and they keep running. So we don't have any outage for existing workload. Where the limitation is without Azure registration, when I want to create a new virtual machine, it's a demo VM01. And this virtual machine will be placed in another path. I will select here the C drive The cluster storage, the volume one I created previously. I will create a new folder. It will be a folder, it's named VMs or virtual machine. I will select this virtual machines folder, use this for storage. I will um, not configure ad any additional values and I will see the virtual machine will run into an, an error. So couldn't create virtual machine when I check this, an error occurred while performing the information and this is the limitation we have based on the situation that our cluster is actually not connected to Azure. So we cannot create new workload on the cluster. We can create new volumes. We can manage existing volumes. We can manage existing VMs, but new VMs, new containers are not possible. So let's check out the Azure registration. And I mentioned this is a newly installed Windows Admin Center. So you will see all the steps required for the configuration. I will click on register this cluster. I will register this cluster. And where do I want to register this cluster? I want to use Azure Global. You can see there's Azure Global, Azure China, and Azure um, yeah, Government. I want to use Azure Global. And important, this step is not the Azure Stack HCI registration itself. This is the step you have to execute once. This step one, two, three, four, to enable the Windows Admin Center to configure Azure options for you. You must imagine we are now in a Windows Admin Center. It's installed locally in our environment and we can want to configure an Azure connectivity. We want to register resources in Azure. This is usually done via the Azure portal. And here we are using the Windows Admin Center. So I will use Azure Global. I have to copy this code I can see here and I have to enter the code on a specific website. So I only click the link, the website opens, I will enter the code I have copied here and click on next. I have to authenticate in my environment. And for sure, I need to specify my password. And sign in. Are you trying to sign in Windows Admin Center? Yes, I want to continue. And now I've signed into the Windows Admin Center application on your device. You may now close this window. I will close this one come back to the Windows Admin Center, and now I can select my Azure Active Directory tenant ID. If you don't know if this is the right Azure Active Directory tenant ID in the list of your IDs, you have to check this via the Azure portal. So you can open the Azure portal via portal.azure.com, and then you can navigate to the Azure Active Directory tenant ID and check if this is the Azure tenant ID you expect. 
When you are sure this is the correct Azure Active Directory tenant ID, the question is if you want to create a new Azure Active Directory application or if you want to use an existing. Usually in a new, in, new environment, you will create a new one. Otherwise, you can select an existing one. I will create a new application and click on Connect here. The last step is to sign into Microsoft Azure. And we had this in previous live demos where I mentioned, please give the system a few minutes to finish the configuration. Because if we click on to sign in too fast, then maybe the application is not fully configured and you will get an error message. Um, and you will wondering, you will wonder what happened there. So now I talked a little bit to you and now I will check the sign in. If it doesn't work, here I can see something went wrong here. I have to accept the permissions and then for sure I can try the login again. If you want to check if you are logged in correctly, you can go to the settings of the Windows Admin Center and here you can check for the Azure account. And here I can see I'm signed in as Manfred in my demo environment. I could sign out, I could switch accounts. This is fine for me. I will go back to the Windows Admin Center list, select the Azure Stack HCI. And in the dashboard, I will now choose the register this cluster. This is the next step I have planned for registering this cluster. I will register this one. There's a permission request if I will give the permission to this Windows Admin Center machine. I will accept this. Now the question is which Azure subscription to use? And to mention this already here, as more complex your Azure environment is, as more problems could occur here. I will use the Azure sponsorship. I will create a new Azure resource group. I will use the Azure Stack HCI resource group. Azure Stack HCI resource group. I want to create this resource group in West Europe. And in advanced, you can see here, Azure Arc is enabled by default. This is the default behavior in Azure Stack HCI 21H2, so the latest version that's actually available. And I want to have West Europe. I'm based in West Europe. I want to have the Azure region West Europe. So my Azure sponsorship, create a new one, Azure Stack HCI resource group, and West Europe, enable Azure Arc. And when I will click on register. When you have a new Azure environment or a very simple Azure environment with one subscription ID, this step will be usually successful. In my demo, it may occur that I'm running into trouble here because I have a very complex Azure environment. And this might also happen in a production environment where you have several subscriptions, several IDs, and maybe also um, connected um, yeah, Azure tenants that are managed by you or managed from another partner. So let's see what happens here. If we are running in an issue here, there's a workaround. I will show this to you to register the cluster manually. Maybe we are successful. Then I only will show you what the workaround would have been. If we are running in an error here because of my Azure environment, I will show you how to um, fix this, how to manually register the cluster in Azure. So my registration was successful. I didn't expect this because I mentioned of this more complex Azure um, yeah, resources I have. If you have a failure here, you can register your cluster via PowerShell with 
register Azure Stack HCI. And the important thing is that you can specify the subscription ID here. And if you have several subscriptions, you can use your preferred subscription. You use the name of one node in your server and the resource group you specified when you tried it and maybe you were running into an issue. It is fine in my configuration here. You find this description here in docs.microsoft.com in deploying Azure Stack HCI, register a cluster with Azure. So let's come back to the Windows Admin Center. Here we can see there are no alerts. The Azure connectivity is connected. And when we go to the settings in the Windows Admin Center on the end of the tools list, we can see here in the Azure Stack HCI section, the Azure Stack HCI registration. And here we can see everything is perfect. It's registered in Azure. Azure Arc integration status is enabled. And the machine is connected because when the machine is registered, it still has to be connected minimum every 30 days to ensure that we have the latest information in Azure, for example, for billing. If we have the situation that the last connection was several days in the past, then this here will switch from a green to a yellow sign to a warning. So if we have a longer time period where we had no connectivity in Azure, and if we have more than the 30 days, it will be an error here. If you want to manually sync it, you can click to sync here. When will you manually sync with Azure? If you realize, oh, it didn't sync for the last two days, I want to ensure that there's no issue, then click on sync, leave the cluster uh, a few minutes alone, and then recheck the status if the sync was successful. And in the licensing part, I explained to you that we can reduce the costs in Azure Stack HCI in disabling cores in the physical hardware. If we disable cores in our Azure Stack HCI cluster, maybe I want to immediately send the information to Azure because I cannot use the cores any longer. My workload, my possible workload is reduced in the cluster. And now I also want to reduce my costs. So let's get back to the slides because we already have seen this cluster is also enabled for Azure Arc. Azure Arc is in my point of view, one of the most powerful tools Microsoft provided us in the last years. Because with Azure Arc, we are able to manage servers on premises, servers at the edge, servers in Microsoft Azure, and in any other cloud. To enable this, on each machine that is Azure Arc enabled, the Azure Virtual Machine Connected Agent is deployed to the servers. So my two nodes in this Azure Stack HCI cluster, where I showed you how to onboard this cluster um, to Azure, and it's similar in a three node cluster, in a four node cluster. Um, there on each node, an Azure Stack, uh, sorry, an Azure virtual machine connected agent was deployed. I can show this to you in the next live demo in a few minutes. Via Azure Arc, we are able to use powerful Azure functionality to configure and manage our on premises systems. Here we have a screenshot and a view on the Azure Stack HCI cluster in Microsoft Azure. Here I see the information about the cluster. I can see the nodes. They are both connected. They are available. Here these are also virtual machines. And I can configure options. I can send configurations. I can use functionality from the Azure portal to bring this to this 
Azure Stack HCI cluster. So let's check the Azure Arc status in our demo environment we used in the previous demo. So we are back in the Windows Admin Center and we have seen the cluster is registered, Azure Arc is enabled, and we can view the Azure resource in the Azure portal. When I click on View Azure Resource, a new tab opens in my browser. The first tab is still Windows Admin Center. The second one is the Azure um, portal. And here we can see, oh, here, this is the resource group, Azure Stack HCI resource group I created. It's Invest Europe in the Azure sponsorship. It is connected 10 minutes ago. This is important for me. For billing, it's important for physical cores. OS build, OS version, cluster name. And I have my two cluster nodes, both connected. Virtual machines, here would see the vendor, the manufacturer of your device, the serial numbers, the cores, the memory, the OS version, the OS build. And for sure, you can click here on one of these servers to get more details of this specific server because each server in the Azure Stack HCI cluster is individually registered in Azure Arc. When we go back to Azure Arc, we can see, let's open a new tab here in the Azure portal. Let's go to Azure Arc here. You can see in Azure Arc, we have the Azure Stack HCI clusters that are registered. We have Kubernetes clusters. We have servers. This can be Windows servers, but the Azure Stack HCI nodes are also listed in the servers. We have the SQL servers, the VMware uh, vCenter servers, it's in preview. The virtual machines are also in preview. PostgreSQL and SQL managed instances are available here and several application services in Azure Arc. So this is the Azure Arc portal. The previous one was the view I receive when I click on this Azure resource link. What I can see here is an activity log for this resource where I can see what happened. Update cluster resource create. Um, here I can see of this cluster resource, I can see there were some errors um, 13 minutes ago. I can see the access control of the resource, the tags I provided diagnose and solve problems. So here we can see common problems. So for example, alerts, health monitoring data, deployment and registration, fail over cluster, general guidance, manage HCI. Let's for example, see fail over clustering this category here. I'm in the Azure portal. Tell us more about the problem you are experiencing. Maybe I want to investigate resource failures in the Azure Stack HCI cluster. And so I can see, okay, there was a startup shutdown. And here I can see, oh yes, there's a policy that describes the virtual machine because Azure Stack HCI is out of policy. Um, this is uh, what means uh, when I'm uh, trying to create a virtual machine where I don't have the Azure connectivity configured or where I didn't have an Azure connectivity in the past 30 days. So I diagnose and solve problems. Extensions here, um, where I can extensions for my configuration, the configuration itself, logs of resources, the logs of resources, the tasks, we can automate, we can have an automation here. So we can automate tasks and we discussed this in a previous module for Azure Stack HCI, we can have a support subscription for Azure and here we can create a new support request. Let's go back to the overview. You can imagine how powerful this already is 
and which powerful features will be added or will be possible to add here. For the nodes, we have the nodes themselves. We have the monitoring. We can enable this. We will do this in a later module. And we will um, be able to use the capabilities for locks and monitoring. What is actually not configured, we will see this in a later step here in the configuration where we can configure the monitoring and the locks um, here. And you already can see to enable this, I could use also the Azure Arc integration here. Let's go back to the nodes. When I select the first node here, the Azure Stack HCI 01, I can use the update management for the node, the locks, monitoring insights, policies actually not configured, change tracking inventory, the security functionality to onboard this um, node to the security center. For sure, usually you will onboard both or all nodes in the cluster to these features. And on the left hand side, you see the settings for security for the properties here in this configuration, the policy settings, the inventory um, in this uh, machine where I get information about the log analytics workspace and so on. And as you can see, many of these parts are um, yeah, related to the onboarding of the log analytics and the monitoring. And we will do this in a later module of this Azure Stack HCI video series. When I'm going back to the Windows Admin Center, I mentioned when I onboarded this cluster to Azure and Azure Arc was integrated on the machines, the virtual machine connected agent, the machine connection agent was deployed. Let's check this. I will open um, the servers for my Azure Stick HCI cluster. We'll go to the inventory. And in the inventory, I should see a list of two servers. And I will take one of these two servers. Let's take the first one. And I can manage this server. So here we can see now we are not any longer on the cluster level. Now we are on the server. We have performance data for the server and so on. And when I'm checking here the um, installed applications on this target server. So when I check what was installed or what is installed on this target server, I will see there's an installation there for the machine agent that's required for the connectivity to Microsoft Azure. The important thing here is that this agent connectivity is also available if we don't have connectivity to the Windows Admin Center. So Windows Admin Center is not involved in this connectivity between the servers and the Azure or the Azure machine connected machine agent and Microsoft Azure. It was installed today, it's the latest version. Um, and so the Azure connectivity is handled from this agent on the nodes. Windows Admin Cell Center itself doesn't install any agent on the target node. Windows Admin Center managed via PowerShell remote and via Windows management instrumentation. For different cloud-based services, we will have dedicated agents there. So this is great to know and important to know because if your Windows Admin Center is not running, the cloud connectivity still works. The subscription still works. The billing still works. We only cannot use this visualization. And for sure, this visualization is great because when I have a look to the dashboard, I immediately see, ah, this machine is connected to Azure and I can view the Azure resource here again where we have been before. So easy to handle, great connectivity and seamless integration. So it just opens a new tab and I'm on my resource in Azure. And when I'm switching back, I'm back on my resources on my server 
on-premises.